I want to thank everyone for coming out and joining us today. Just a reminder, please turn off all cell phones. We will begin with our agenda. Items on the agenda may be taken out of order. The board may combine two or more agenda items for consideration. The board may remove an item from the agenda or delay discussion relating to an item at any time. No action may be taken on any matter not listed on the posted agenda. All planning and zoning matters heard at this meeting are forwarded to the Board of County Commissioner Zoning Commission, the BCC, or the Clark County Planning Commission, PC, for final action. Please turn off or mute all cell phones and electronic devices. Please take all private conversations outside of the room. With the 48-hour advance request, a sign language interpreter or other re reasonable efforts to assist the accommodation, accommodate people with physical disabilities may be made available by calling 702-455-3530. TDD at 702-385-7486 or Relay Nevada toll free at 800-326-6868. Supporting material provided to the board for this meeting may be requested from Tammy Harris at 702-298-0828. Supporting material is also available at the Clark County Department of Administration Services. Supporting material will be available on the county's website at, H at clarkcountynv.gov slash Laughlin TAB. Okay, our Board of Officers today is Kathleen Haas, myself, Pamela Walker, Fred Doton, Kathy Oates, and Herm Walker. Our Secretary, Tammy Harris, 702-298-0828. Her email's tammy.harris at clarkcountynv.gov. County liaison is Mark Moskowitz, 702-298-0828 or 702-455-6173. His email is mark.moskowitz, M-O-S-K-O-W-I-T-Z, at clarkcountynv.gov. We will now call the order. Roll call. Herm Walker. Here. Kathy Oates. Here. Fred Doton. Here. Pam Walker. Here. Kathleen Haas, here. Please stand, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pam, you wanna lead it? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public comments. This is a period devoted to comments by the general public about items on this agenda. No discussion, action, or vote may be taken on this agenda item. You will be afforded the opportunity to speak on individual public hearing items at the time they are presented. If you wish to speak to the board about items within this jurisdiction but not appearing on this agenda, You must wait until the comments by the general public period listed at the end of this agenda. Comments will be limited to three minutes. Please step up to the speaker's podium, clearly state your name and address, and please spell your last name for the record. If any member of the board wishes to extend the length of a presentation, this will be done by the chairperson or the board majority vote. We will now move into approval of the minutes from March 12th.
Second. Okay, motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Motion carried. Approval of the agenda for today, April 9th, 2024. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Yep. Informational items. We will receive an update report from the South County Liaison Mark Moskowitz on regarding updates on the Colorado River Heritage Greenway Park Trail Advisory Council, Laughlin Residential Road Rehabilitation Program Phase 2, Areas 4 and 5, Commissioner Mike Neff, South County Day, April 10th, including Get Outdoors Nevada Cleanup at Pyramid Canyon Park and any other updates from Clark County. Perfect, thank you, Chair. Um, so I've got a few updates today. Um, as everyone knows, on March, or sorry, on April 2nd, the Board of County Commissioners uh, formally appointed five members to the Colorado River Heritage Greenway Park Trail Advisory Council. Those uh, individuals were, it was Fred Doughton, Deborah Murray, Renee Yepes, <laughs> Kathleen Haas, and Victoria Connolly. So congratulations. I know we have two town board members on there, but we also have a lot of good community members on as well. Um, our first meeting will be actually tomorrow at 1 p.m. in this room. So that'll be the kickoff meeting. Um, Commissioner Naft will be there as well as myself. Um, as I've said before, please, if you weren't appointed or are still interested in the park and the council, you can join these meetings. They're going to be public meetings, so there's public participation that's encouraged and, and warranted there. So um, please don't feel discouraged if you weren't appointed, but um, this will, we'll start to have these meetings and we'll um, set out the whole agenda and, and the, the timeline of the meetings that will be voted on there. So um, we look forward to seeing everyone there at 1 p.m. tomorrow. So. Um, and then if you want to go to the PowerPoint presentation, some exciting news. So I know we had the Laughlin Residential Road Rehabilitation Program phases one, two, and three. Now on March 19th, the BOCC, BCC um, approved to have Las Vegas Paving be the contractor to do areas four and five. And on that map, you can see that includes all of the areas. Four and five are gonna be that darker green and then the lighter green. So that's gonna finish up every um, residential road that's not HOA or private. Um, the notice to proceed should begin April 29th, so that'll probably start with more of utility locates, um, kind of spray painting on the roads, and then once I get more of a formal uh, paving schedule, um, we'll be able to share that with the community. As always, they'll put the door hangers out at least 72 hours in advance, let you know. So if you see some and maybe they blow away or something, please let your neighbors know to just make sure we're all prepared. And if you have any questions, always contact our, my office and our office down here. We're more than happy to help. Um, this will also include the complete reconstruction of James A. Bilbray and El Mirage. So I know those are some roads that are looking for um, some needed care on them. So we're excited that those are part of this program. So once this will be completed, should be end of year, I would say, but as we know with construction, anything could happen, but um, look forward to that happening. So, yeah. Um, did you have a... I was just gonna ask if staff could possibly get me the contract contact at Las Vegas Paving, just because um, some of my property that I have, they can store stuff there because it was a, a, an issue in the past when stuff was stuck still on the road and <clears throat> people weren't able to get around it. Yeah. Um, and some residents didn't like stuff up, you know, along their houses. Yeah. So if I can get that contact, I can give them my property to store stuff. Yep, we'll definitely do that. And as always, um, if you see like maybe some tools are left or stuff is like on the road that doesn't seem right, please call our office. We can get in touch with Public Works. Um, that will happen from time to time, not normal, but um, some stuff might be left from the contractor. Don't feel like it needs to be left there. Let us know, take a picture, send it to our office. We'll send it to the project manager at Public Works and they'll take care of it, so, so yeah. Um, so that's my first update. And then if you wanna go to the next slide, um, I want to thank Renee Yep is with um, LVMPD. She'll probably speak more to this, um, or Metro will. They've invited Commissioner Naft to be a part of the barbecue that's going to be happening tomorrow here at 11.30 a.m. So we're really excited to partner with them and, and do a little 
just a, a really great event to show off the substation. I'll let them speak more in it because I don't want to take all of their um, time on that. So, and then the next slide. Um, so as I mentioned, at 1 p.m. we're gonna have our kickoff meeting and we thought a great way to kind of tie in the River Council was to do a, a community cleanup. So that'll be at about 1.30 p.m. following that first meeting. And that's gonna be at the Pyramid Canyon day use area. Get Outdoors Nevada is partnering with us. They'll provide all of the shovels, um, trash picker uppers, bags, gloves, just show up. Um, you can sign up in advance, but you're more than welcome to just show up there, sign up and just, pick up some trash, so that'll be a nice event to really show off the area that we're focusing on with this new council, but also do some good in the community. So we're looking forward to that. Um, if you have any questions, just uh, contact our office or let us know, and we're looking forward to that. Hopefully it won't be too windy, but um, we'll collect some trash. And what's really cool with that that I love is their program. They'll let us know how much trash we collected, so then we can like share with how much we've removed from the area, which is always nice, so yeah. And then if you want to go to the next slide, so um, at, after the cleanup at 3 p.m., we're going to be going to uh, the Laughlin Library. They are celebrating their 30th anniversary, which we're very excited for. Um, Commissioner Naff will be presenting a proclamation to the library, just congratulating them on 30 years. I think it's one of the best libraries in the district, um, has wonderful views and a great staff and team there. So. Um, I know our, our fire department's going to be there. I know there's going to be a lot of community partners there. So come and check that out. Um, really, it, we have a great gem in this area of the library. So we're excited to participate in that. And then following that, we're going to, if anyone wants to head up to Searchlight, we have just worked with you and our extension and the Searchlight Fetterman organization to create a community garden in Searchlight. I know we have one here in Laughlin, but um, UNR has been instrumental in helping us set one up in the Searchlight Community Center. So we're just going to do a little ribbon cutting there. If anyone can attend the other events and want to be a part of it, you're more than welcome to as well. So, and then um, the next slide, I just want to thank the Laughlin Times. They did a really great article in the March 20th newspaper about all the services we have at this building, including the clerk and recorder's kiosk, um, business license, marriage license, our office, um, just all the things that are available. So it was really great to highlight it. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, Business License really enjoyed speaking with Jill in the paper to, to provide really good information of what we can help people with so they can avoid trips to Las Vegas if necessary. And as always, we're looking to bring as many services down here as possible. So if there's some that you think of, like, let us know. We can talk with our county departments. I mean, some will be harder than others, but I'm always okay, and Commissioner Nafta is always okay to ask the question to see if it's possible, so. Um, if you go to the next slide, this is a really awesome program. This is with USDA and our office as well. They're gonna have kind of a entrepreneurs kickoff meeting for this Startup NV Rule Roadshow. And that's gonna be on May 15th in this room. And um, you can see there's a bunch of information on this, but um, anyone that's maybe looking to start a business or has an idea for the community, I would say definitely try to make this time work. Um, there's gonna be a lot of resources in the room, and I think it's a long program that's maybe over several weeks. So they're kind of doing their kickoff. Um, if you have any questions, I know it's um, next month, but let us know and we can connect you with the right people. Um, and sorry for all the fun updates. So this was another great event with um, Renee Yepes and LVMPD of doing Cops and Bobbers. So thank you so much. Um, my dad was actually in town and we were able to do this event and we had a blast. It was so much fun to be out there and see all the resources and communities. So thank you for hosting that event and inviting our office to it. So, um, and then we can go to the next slide. and. Um, I had an awesome time at the air show uh, this Saturday. I want to thank everyone. I mean, the list is so long. I know Jackie was a champion of it. This has been so fun to go now to my second air show in a row. So thank you, Jackie, and, and everyone that sat on those long calls and really figured out. I mean, Silver Rider was amazing, as always, with buses and transportation. And it's such an awesome show to go to. I know I've, I've gone to the one in uh, Nellis Air Force Base. This one's just as great, if not better. I mean, it's such a homey feel. It's so nice to be able to see our friends and everybody there. So great job and thank you. I had a blast um, attending that and meeting a lot of people in the community. So, um, And then just a few more updates. Uh, the last one is that we have Commissioner Naff's newsletter in the back. As always, um, let us know if you'd like a digital copy of it. This has a lot of good information of what's going on in 
all areas of the county and district day so um, let me know but pick up a hard copy if you like so and with that those are all my updates so we look forward to seeing everyone tomorrow um, during the Laughlin kind of searchlight day um, let us know if you have any questions or would like to attend anything but everything's open to the public so we look forward to seeing everyone thank you Okay, number two, receive an awards presentation from the Laughlin Rotary to honor our first responder for their dedication and contributions to the Laughlin community. Hi, I'm Jackie and this is Renee Yapez. She's with Metro and I am with Laughlin Tourism and together we celebrate our Laughlin Rotary Club. Um, we're the only service organization in the town. We also have a member over there in Fred Doton. Um, we meet every Wednesday at 5 o'clock at the Laughlin Chamber office. And it's one of our um, programs to recognize, excuse me, recognize students of the month and then recognize a student of the year from Laughlin Junior Senior High School. And we also, rep we also recognize a first responder every quarter. This month, we have chosen U.S. Park Ranger William Foster. Congratulations, Mr. Foster, if you'd like to come over here. U.S. Park Ranger William Foster has been in the Mojave District of Lake Mead National Recreation Area since 2018 and has moved from new officer to one of the most senior rangers in the Mojave District in Lake Mead. Important to the Lake Mead team, Ranger Foster soft skill have bridged park branches such as maintenance, science and resource management, and the administrative offices, and has fostered outside relationships with cooperating agencies and groups with vested interests in the park, such as local tribal affiliates and game and fish departments. Thank you. <laughs> To include representation of the National Park Service and law enforcement through the participation at school events and acquiring numerous thank you letters by the above mentioned agencies. Prior to being a park ranger, Officer Foster served as an EMT because of his strength in this area and he has the collateral duty of taking care of the EMS cachet. Is that what you, how you say that word? I want to make sure I say it right. At Catherine's Landing. He has been tasked by the superintendent in helping write an executive summary addressing park concerns. Ranger Foster is only one of two Mojave Rangers signed off to boat at night. This is a critical task for search and rescue operations. A self-initiated task, Ranger Foster took upon himself to walk through arrest procedures for new rangers, old rangers, and supervisory rangers, making sure everyone is current on the procedures and forms to use. Nominated by coworkers, Foster Ranger Foster has won Mojave Ranger of the Year Award in 2022 and 2023, a recipient of the Life Safe Award for his contribution in rescuing a near-death drowning patient on the 4th of July weekend. Wow, congratulations. Already one-third of the way through his 2024, Ranger Foster has, has achieved two significant accomplishments. Selected as a use of force trainer and a field training officer whose responsibility will be to train and evaluate officers completing the academy. His team would also like to thank his wife Monica for tolerating late nights, missed dates, 3 a.m. call outs, overtime holidays, and all of those other events that comes with marry being married to a first responder. Would she like to join us now, please? please. Snuck in the back. Uh, <laughs> It is the honor of the Rotary of Laughlin to present for the first quarter of 2024 this First Responders Award to Ranger William Foster. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's fine.
gravel. The gravel, you know, with those big rocks. Congratulations. <clears throat> okay, moving on to number three. Receive a report from Lieutenant Rogers with the Metro Police. I was gonna say, I don't see him. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon. I'm Sergeant Donnie Cox. I'm not Lieutenant Rogers. So month to month, the uh, crime statistics uh, for last month are not uh, significantly increased. There's not really a significant increase in any of these particular crime categories uh, for our arrests coming up for the, the spring season going into the summertime. Um, not really a statistical change uh, significantly from 2023 to 2024, uh, only about 21 different uh, increase in the number of uh, total uh, calls for service. The traffic citations have obviously increased, um, and as the weather gets warmer from month to month, the domestic violence cases, both on the casino drive and up in the residential area, have both taken a, a, a normal and expected uh, minor increase. The calls for service at the schools uh, have both gone up year to date from uh, just a couple to, we have six this month and four over at Bennett, I'm sorry, six at the high school and four at Bennett Elementary School. Um, and along casino drive, the number of uh, crime reports and Calls for service have gone up, just expected, uh, but minimal. Uh, the other events that we're involved in here recently, uh, Wednesday is, uh, we all know it's gonna be a busy day for everybody coming up with uh, the open house here. So please, uh, if, uh, if you're available, come out. It's gonna be a really big event. We're inviting everyone from the community to take part in that. Um, and then with the cleanup walk and then uh, the library uh, uh, anniversary. Uh, in addition to that, we have the uh, hydroponic mentorship that we participate in over at uh, Laughlin High School. So that's another one that we continue to participate. I think we're in week eight of 12 for that one. Um, we've seen a lot of really good success and interest in, in the kids from that. So that, uh, that's one of our, our favorite projects to participate in right now. Um, other than that, I think everything else has already been mentioned for the, uh, for the events going on tomorrow. <laughs> yes. I was just going to ask, um, with it's not necessarily the Harley run anymore, but what type of planning and stuff are we having for that uh, with Metro and fire? We don't anticipate a, uh, a huge response in service, but we are bringing additional squads out from Las Vegas Valley to, to complement our officers here on casino. Um, the, the resident officers that are here, obviously we're, we're more or less on call. Uh, so we have a, uh, another whole uh, surplus of officers that we're able to, to add to our numbers once we have them down here. So we're looking to increase between four and five squads from the, uh, the, the resident officers here in Laughlin, um, increasing those by about four or five squads coming in from the Las Vegas Valley. How do you define squads? What is that numerically? Uh, a sergeant plus about seven to 10 officers. Okay, okay. And are there statistics from the recent runs that we had like last year and stuff? Um, and will you have those to compare against for I this year? I think Lieutenant Rogers would have those. I'm not prepared. Okay. No, 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 I know, but it's just something, you know, be interested in knowing for the next meeting in May. I'll make a note. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Thank you. Okay, number four, receive a report from Clark County Fire Department. I don't see anybody. Don't see anybody. Okay, number five. Receive a report from Jason Bailey, Big Bend Water District. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Jason Bailey, Big Bend Water District, uh, here with the report for the month of March. So as you can see, the water use uh, total diversions for the month were 244 acre feet of water diverted from the river um, year to date that's 661 acre feet so we're up from this time last year of 604 acre feet 
As far as a system update, staff are preparing to perform a chemical skid improvement and a variable frequency drive um, upgrade. These projects will help improve the reliability and redundancy of the system. The, the drive upgrade can help vary the pump demand um, and so it will help improve the redundancy of, of, and reliability of the system. Development inquiries, you can see that there is an addition at the bottom of that list. It's Commonwealth Company, investment company. Um, this is the housing development on Needles Highway. They've reached out to the Big Bend Water District as well as the county um, and just, just really initial talks of, of a proposed development there. The financial update uh, for fiscal year through the end of February, um, the operating, there was an operating deficit of 9,000 and after uh, capital expenditures and debt payments, um, the accumulated debt balance increased um, from about 3.3 million to 3.8. And then I did want to announce as well, um, I haven't heard anything yet on the Water Resource Des Development Act. This was the funding that we've sought through Congresswoman Lee's office. Um, but I hope to have an update soon. Um, when I receive one, I will uh, bring that to the board. I did want to announce, though, that Chris Mays, our operations superintendent, will be transferring to a treatment plant up in Las Vegas, the Alfred Merritt Smith plant. And so we, uh, the district has hired Jermaine Smith. He will be starting at the end of this month. I think the start date is the 29th. Um, he's worked uh, with the Southern Nevada Water Authority before, has about 28 years of experience uh, as a water treatment um, officer and he, uh, most recently he'll be coming and he's been um, operating a plant in Georgia. So when he is here, probably next month, um, I'll introduce him to the board. And that is my report. Thank you. Any questions? <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Will Smith is not with us today. So we'll go to number seven, receive a report from Kelly Lohr, South County. Is that not here? No. Okay. Okay, let's receive a report from Parks and Recreation. Are they here today? Nope. Well, I know it's not the nice weather out there because it's just blowing like crazy. Okay, and Carrie will not be joining us today. So let's go to number 10. We see a report from Jackie Wallen with the Laughlin Tourist Commission. We know she's here. Tanya's here either. Thank you very much for including me. <clears throat> um, my report is mainly going to be about the air show and it's not going to be accurate at this point they're all preliminary numbers so it's only been a couple days <laughs> so we have to get back to counting and making sure that everything's accurate before we give anybody any numbers to go uh, into our future uh, thank you for attending and i hope you enjoyed yourself first of all i want to talk about the increase in um, transportation most of our comments and compliments this year have come from our ability to step up transportation. Last year we had 48 buses ranging from Kingman, Bullhead City, Elementary, Bullhead City, Crushed, Mojave Valley, and Fort Mojave. This year they all participated and gave us additional buses, including Southern Nevada Transit Coalition came through with some buses, including 40-foot ADA buses so that we could combat the issues that we had last year with ADA um, disabled people trying to get on the same bus as um, our abled people and not being able to get on a bus with their family. So the 40-foot buses were able to handle wheelchairs and scooters and those kind of things and they could take their family with them. We also gave them an, an, a separate entrance to the air show so that they wouldn't get walked over or pushed over or um, have to go through um, that hump that's over there at gate six. There's a big rail for a gate and it makes it very difficult for um, anybody to get over that when they're entering. This year we increased um, bus services and um, transportation routes so that the routes would not get uh, provide congestion on Highway 95 between the old or 7th Street uh, uh, 
and the uh, bridge. That was very congested last year and we tried to eliminate that by sending some of the buses off Laughlin Ranch Boulevard and it worked out perfect. Um, big thanks to Laughlin, I mean, to Bullhead City um, Police Department. They had every person out there that they could muster up and they did a really good job in controlling traffic and making sure that everyone stayed safe. We had remote lot attendants from all nonprofits. Um, Pam, uh, you went out there too, right? Anyways, we had a lot of people out there um, in all the different colored lots, five different colored lots, making sure that people got on and off the buses um, safely and that they knew where to come back, what color lot that they needed to come back to. So the next thing they had to do was come in and the first thing that most families were greeted by was the STEM activity. Thank you to Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department for their presence. We had a touch a truck program that was amazing from the largest crane all the way down to police trucks and, and, and fire trucks and dot foods, big tractor trailers. There was so much going on in STEM, I could not identify all of them right now, including a robot dog. You would have loved that, Kathy. Uh, there was lots of things they could earn their wings. It was just a great family zone, including UNR. Uh, they came over, Kelly, and she did some science projects and some stuff for the children. So the kids' eyes were opened right away as soon as they walked in, not just with aviation and aeronautics, but science in general. And it was a great welcoming tool. We separated carts uh, from the walkers this year, and that made it much safer so we didn't have golf carts walking the same place pedestrians were. In addition, we added trams. So this year we got five of the people mover trams from Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Finley gave us five brand new trucks and five dedicated drivers to haul people from the north end of there to the south end with five uh, stopping points for them to get on and off. It was very convenient for people and they um, had um, disability ramps so the ramps would come down and you could get on it with your scooter or your walker and it was very, very nice. A lot of people really appreciated it. Compliments coming in today are the increase in potties. <laughs> People didn't have to stand in line to go to the bathroom and the increase in um, concessions and vendors. We had eight last year and everybody ran out of food and people had to stand too long in, too long in lines to get food. This year we increased it to over 20 and a lot of people got a lot of diverse food. The VIP, tip, VIP tents were filled with at least 700 vi volunteer, um, not volunteers, VIPs, true VIPs, um, not my volunteers in partnership. And we fed over 499 volunteers in the volunteer hospitality tent this year. 120 pizzas, tons and tons of hot dogs and snacks and fruit and energy bars. We did have some stuff that was good for their health. Um, and we also were entertained by some of the craziest pilots in the world, um, especially old Red. He lands his uh, plane on top of an ambulance. And he is, you have to be really, really good to be that bad. Um, and he, he was lots of fun. But on, resembled on the back of this year's shirt was the jet fuel car and with the, with the plane racing it. And they didn't disappoint again this year. They did it that race twice and it was really, really fun. This year I was honored by uh, Lindsay uh, she is the only female A-10 pilot in the United States. This is her last year. It's that last year for the A-10. And they gave me um, a shell. It's called a, um, uh, what's that thing called? Uh, I can't even think of the word right now. The big thing you'd write in, the big huge thing that you're writing. You know. It's, <laughs> Has the cannons on it, people inside? A tank. Thank you. I couldn't get that word to come to my head. It's called the tank killer. And they gave me one of those, and it's all engraved um, for the Laughlin Bullhead Air Show, saying thank you for including them. I don't know why that word wouldn't come, but you know, sometimes things just don't come to your head. And as you get older, it hurts. <laughs> um, but the whole day went very, very well. And we had a full entertainment from noon with a little in intermission and then uh, four o'clock it ended and everybody got out safe. We had one minor, minor cut and one major cut, but that was from somebody slipping onto a bus. But those have all been handled, but no problems.
Very, very, thank you. And the most blessed thing of all days, um, we had the perfect sunshine, the perfect temperature, and no W. I'll have to tell you, the night on Friday night, it was not as fun. Friday night, we had the second VIP tent come up. It had only had its top and one side on, and a um, big wind came through. And it picked up the whole tent and the cement blocks and moved it across the tarmac. And those workers came out of there crying. They were so scared. It was something to behold. And if I hadn't seen it and been able to tell you, I wouldn't have believed it. But um, it broke all the frame of that tent. And so we had to wait till the wee hours of the morning to get the, the parts. But all the, everybody was safe. And we ended up getting the tent up and getting the tables and chairs ready. But it was really a challenge. And I'm so grateful that no one got hurt. Thank you to the. Um, our IFP International Fun Place, or Laughlin Bullhead International Airport, the City of Bullhead City, and Laughlin Tourism Commission for giving us the money and the trust to put on a, a big party like this. And it, it was lots of fun. And security was amazing. We will not be having another air show until 2026, as in 2024, Nellis Air Force Base, they're giving us a military air show and we will be highlighting that a lot in our community so that everybody can know that they're a little bit different. The last complaint that we had this year so far, or one of several, um, was that we didn't have enough military presence. And that is because of the obvious. Um, Nellis Air Force Base couldn't have it this year because they lost uh, about 48% of their staff and a large amount of their assets. So. We know what they're doing. They're taking care of us and protecting us and um, doing what our commander in chief tells them to do. And so if we don't, couldn't have an air show there this year, we'll have it next year and they'll be there in their glory. And that includes the Thunderbirds. So we're kind of excited. The only other thing I have to report is that we do have a, a, um, a, a act, uh, Jason Aldean coming in September. And we do have rockets over the river coming 4th of July. It's the standard report I give you and give, give you more information as we get closer. I promise that in this, I have written that I will give you more results um, on accurate numbers and statistics, complaints, and some of those great compliments we're getting from some of our public officials that attended. Um, we did have the Lieutenant Governor uh, there, and his number one um, asset for me is that he loves tourism. So he was there in all of his glory and met everybody from Bullhead and everywhere, and he's really excited to see that these two states and these two communities partner as one to big, bring big events to this area so that everyone benefits, and I think he really enjoyed himself. The highlight of the whole day was a 101-year-old World War II veteran that came to visit us, and we pushed him around in his wheelchair, and he put his thumb up. I don't know how many times with kids when they wanted to take their picture with him or with other veterans. In one case, we actually had a four-generation picture. Um, of course, he was the oldest. <laughs> but a three-generation family, all military people, got to take their picture with him. And it was very, very heartwarming. And he really enjoyed himself. And he was a hit for all the students to be able to talk to him about his experiences in war. So. I think that's all I have to share. I hope that was good enough for you today, but I will bring you statistics next month. I'll stand for any questions. Thank you. Any questions? No. No, thank you. Great job, Jackie. Great job. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed Wonderful it. Wonderful event. Thank you. Okay, do we have Tanya Brown here with the library? Nope, no one from the school. Okay, announcements of upcoming neighborhood meetings and county or community meetings and events. None of this time, just the April 10th tomorrow. We've got that full set of events going on, so we look forward to it. <clears throat> Perfect. Okay, we have no planning or zoning today and no general business. <clears throat> so this leads us to the comments by the general public. This is a period devoted to comments by the general public about matters relevant to the board to be withheld. No vote may be taken on a matter not listed on the posted agenda. Comments will be limited to three minutes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Please step up to the speaker's podium 
Clearly state your name, your address, and spell your last name for the record. If any member of the board wishes to extend the length of this presentation, <clears throat> this will be done by a chairperson for a majority vote. Good afternoon. Kelly Lair, University of Nevada, Reno Extension. I just got out of a robotics class, sorry. Um, we continue to run programming before school at Bennett Elementary School on Thursday mornings. This month we began some urban gardening concepts with them at the community garden um, at the park adjacent to their school. And they've been able to plant aloe vera plants, play with ladybugs, see worms, praying mantis eggs. And this week they're going to be making fairy gardens, which they're very excited about. And next week we are hosting their STEM assembly on Tuesday the 16th for the entire student body. And uh, we're going to showcase Perump's uh, robotics team. So they're doing pretty well in the state. Our 4-H curriculum continues at the Boys and Girls Club on Thursdays with the teen scene. We're also doing some junior master gardener themes and curriculum as the weather continues to improve. And Devin, my partner, will implement a hydroponics base for them for their herbs uh, this Thursday. Devin and I have started programming at the Laughlin High School. That's where I just came from, from their robotics class. And we'll continue to provide programming and curriculum on Tuesdays and Thursdays through the calendar school year. The UNR Extension Horticulture Department and the Metro PD um, continue with their hydroponics curriculum on Wednesdays. And I'm trying to hop in there every other Wednesday so I can kind of learn from them. It's a really neat program. Mr. Nansen, one of his students, assisted at the Bullhead City Laughlin Air Show um, in the STEM tent this past weekend. And we got the uh, Logandale team to come out. They have won the state championships for their robotics, and they're going to world championships. So they came and did their demonstration on Saturday. It was fantastic. So we're attempting to get the kids out in the community and kind of showcase their talents. Our community garden is going to get some assistance from Rotary and the Master Gardeners, Gardeners and the Interact Club at the end of the month. And we hope to have three more beds built and filled with soil because all of them are filled right now. And so if we have three more open up, then I'm hoping to get a call and we'll get those in. Some beautiful veggies coming up and some herbs as well. We're also providing raised garden beds for the senior center here in Laughlin so they don't have to hike down the hill to the garden. And we're doing another one in Cal Navari um, on, on their, like to the left of their, their ramp and their stairs as they go into their community center. So that's April 18th and April 24th, and we're, we're going to try and plant some herbs for them so they can get their hands dirty. UNR Extension's offering summer programming for third through fifth grade students at the Laughlin Library beginning the end of May. We're going to offer Junior Master Gardener series where they can get certified. It's a certification process. That'll be uh, Thursday mornings at 1030, beginning on May 30th. And then immediately following, following will be a Lego robotics class from noon to 1 on Thursdays as well. And registration is free as always, but space is limited. And so if you know anybody who's interested, have them contact my office and we'll get them set up. We enjoyed hosting the STEM tent this Saturday. Just hundreds of kids coming by. They were um, doing stomp rockets and they, were, they had the controls to the robots, and they were doing drone flying, and they were making pinwheels, and we were just trying to give them something hands-on that they would learn and take home, and they loved it. We'll also be in attendance at the Wings and Wildlife event in May to assist in any way we can. Um, we really like the Cops and Bobbers event that Renee and Metro put on. That was a pretty neat event, and we love being a part of that as well. And then. I am going to make myself available for the Greenway Trail Committee meetings after our programming is done. So we're just ready and willing to help any way we can with the community. So just wanted you to know what was happening, what we're doing, and if you have any questions for me. Any questions? Do you have a list of the schedule? I have all kinds of lists. So we're also doing searchlight stuff. So. Um, <laughs> If you would like an email and I can send it to you, but the library does a pretty good job of posting our things at the library as well. So I have no problem doing that. Nice to meet you, Kathleen. Do we have any of those here? <clears throat> uh, library schedule, no, but I can get you guys, I, I can send you all one. Well, I was just thinking for uh, our circular handouts that we have. Sure. Some of I the schedules of what you guys have. For yeah, if the you could public. just send them to us, my office. Absolutely. And get them yep. all distributed. Thank you so much. Any other comments? Hello.
Hello, board members and staff. Um, I want to let you know I've tried my best to Excuse make it me, three you minutes. You need to say your name. My name is Jill Ramalot, and I'm speaking as a volunteer for River Fund today. I'm going to talk about two events, so I've tried my best to fit it in three minutes. I may be slightly over, but I'll do my best to fit it in three. <coughs> I'm here to tell you about the Great Duck Pluck. It is a River Fund fundraiser that is coming up this Saturday, and I want to invite all of you to attend and to tell folks that we still have duck adoption tickets available. You can get those at riverfundinc.com. And I want to thank our sponsors. So I'm gonna, no particular order, but we want to thank very much the Laughlin Rotary Club and the American Legion Laughlin Post 60 and Old Town Saloon, as well as the Bullhead Bell, City of Bullhead, Don Laughlin's Riverside Resort, Jean Jeffrey Salons, Tri-State Community Healthcare, the new Pioneer Hotel and Casino, the Legacy Foundation, Dot Foods, US Southwest Real Estate, El Charo Mexican Restaurant, Fairway Constructors, Seabury Fritz Architects, Paul Bull State, Farm Insurance, AOBI, Bullhead City School District 15, Mojave Valley School District 16, Mojave Electric Cooperative, Ameri a Nation's Finest, Bullhead City Rotary Club, the Aquarius and Edgewater Casino Resorts, TWN Communications, Warm Sea, Arizona G&T Cooperatives, and Valley View Medical Center. Now, this is the best part. We want to thank our celebrity duck pluckers, and we have one right here. <laughs> Mark Moskovich is going to be out there helping us pluck the winning ducks, and we're very proud to have him with us. And we also have Jennifer Ronan, who is the chairman of the Laughlin Chamber Board of Directors and the Women's Council. She is with uh, First Citizens Bank here in Laughlin, and those are our two Laughlin representatives, and we're hoping very much that we'll get more Laughlin folks involved next year. We kind of didn't reach out early enough this year, but we want more of you involved. Um, also, some of our pluckers will include uh, Bullhead City Mayor Steve D'Amico, and Council Member Grace Hecht and City Manager Toby Cotter and Human Services Director Jeff Tipton, Bullhead City Police Department Community Services Officer Lori Duggins. We have Mojave County Supervisor Hildy Angus, Bullhead City Justice of the Peace John Moss, Legacy Foundation Vice President Terry Tomlinson, I already mentioned Jennifer, Medea Zarmi of Fairway Constructors, and Tyler Carlson, who's Mojave Electric Co-op CEO. So as I said, we just want to let you know we still have duck tickets available and all this money stays right in our community. It's really important to help River Fund to continue to provide all these assistance that it does for folks. Here's some of the things River Fund does. Since 2010, River Fund has impacted more than 80,000 lives in our communities. They provide immediate emergency assistance and hardship assistance, and over those 10 year, uh, 12 years now, almost uh, actually 13 and a half, they have put out more than $3.7 million to help the local people, and all of that has come from you folks in this community donating and all of the corporate sponsorships, and these special events make a big difference. Last year, this event raised $29,000, and we're really hoping that we can do that again because it's really important to help us continue to provide. Utility assistance is our top request. Other necessities that are covered include rent, food, temporary shelter, medical and pharmaceutical needs, vehicle and appliance repairs, work cards for folks who can't afford it but have a job, um, birth certificates, ID cards, other things that folks need that they just don't have the ability to get. And River Fund is located right here at the Regional Government Center. It's at 55 Civic Center, uh, Civic Way. And um, it is open uh, Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. So anyone who needs help can stop by there and they will help everyone who they can, that's the goal. So I look forward to seeing you all at the Great Duck Pluck at the Bullhead Bell at Bullhead Community Park on Saturday, April 13th. It is locals helping locals and we need all the support we can get and we appreciate all you've given. And then one last thing, a River Fund is also the beneficiary of the Veterans Poker Run, which is a piece of the River Run that is the, the motorcycle rally that's coming up at the end of the month. So on April 27th, it's a benefit uh, poker run where the bikers go around and pick up five cards and win prizes and all the money goes to River Fund's Veterans Assistance Fund. The Veterans Assistance Fund is really in need of help. So we really want to make sure that everyone knows that that's where all the funds for this go. We have sponsorships available and folks can just sign up and participate and all the money goes to the Veterans Assistance Fund of River Fund. You can find all the information about that at riverfundinc.com and we invite you all to come out to the Duck Pluck on Saturday. 
and enjoy it. And we can't wait to see Mark. We're going to make sure we take a lot of pictures and provide them so he can present them at his next month's presentation. <laughs> We're really happy to have you, Mark. Thank you so much for participating. <laughs> Thank you. Any other comments? Greg Caudill, C-A-U-D-I-L-L, -L, uh, Monte de Sol. I have two questions. No one's been able to answer them. This is all from the uh, Clark County, Nevada Annual Action Plan that's been published and out to the public. Uh, on page 18 of it, one of them is that the St. Jude's Ranch for Children Healing Center and the Laughlin Multi-Generational Center projects were canceled and the funds were going to other projects. Why were these canceled, I wonder? And why are the funds going somewhere else? I know recently the American Legion just had a benefit breakfast for the St. Jude's for the for the uh, this uh, uh, ranch, and uh, I, this was a big surprise to me. The second question that I wanted to know is, it's on page 17 in the same brochure, Wisconsin Partnership for Housing Development was awarded $800,000, three quarters of a million dollars in funds to assist with new construction of a proposed 36 unit apartment project designed for senior occupancy. It will contain 31 bedroom units, six two bedroom units. All the units are between the 30% and 60% AMI. The project's located at Needles Highway and Rio Vista Drive in unincorporated Cook, uh, Clark County, which is Laughlin. That's a major thoroughfare through Needles, and I'm just, they're getting $800,000 has been awarded, and there's a moratorium with the, why, why did this happen? What is, why is $800,000 going for, something like that when there's projects that we could use a light by the legion something like that i just anybody have any, had any answers because so far i've asked around and i was told to come to you guys to ask you mr so unfortunately since it is public comment we're not allowed to dialogue but i've taken notes down and i can get your contact and then uh, follow up with you as well so if that will work all right so no one here knew anything about it or um so I'll get with Mark so that he can confer with you. And I sit on the CDAC for the last four years, the Community Development um, Achievement or Advisory Committee. Hello. And um, we went through what happened with the um, senior, cell, senior Center and then also how this grant was awarded because it was voted for in this season with the HUD funds that we had this year. So I'll get with Mark and update him so he can get that information to you. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for your time. Yep. Thank you. Greg, I just want to uh, clarify something. The function that was held for St. Jude's Ranch at the American Legion was actually hosted by the Laughlin Elks, and I can guarantee you all funds that were collected are going directly to St. Jude's Ranch. Oh. There was no question about any impropriety or anything with the funds and where it was going. I know that it was all done. I'm a, a member of the American Legion. Uh, it was wondering why that this plan or pro projects just like vaporized that no one has any answer of why the funds are being transferred somewhere else and as it says in this report canceled not postponed and just done you know what I mean so I know that you can still St. Jude's is not you know going out of business so I know you can there can be the funds can go there but I thought we had a local program that we were supporting also so okay okay thank you any other comments <coughs> Okay, seeing no comments, our next meeting will be May 14th, 2024. And if I can have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Thank you all for coming, and make sure you turn your phones back on.